against Fnatic MSI's TT1 on the left. These are your two grand finalists, ladies and gentlemen. And they will be duking it out for that top prize of $6,250. All right, the players are going to their stations. Exciting moment here as we will reach the conclusion. General getting some last minute stretches in. TT1 very comfortable sitting down. They've already said good luck, have fun. And now Jinro's going to be burrowing into that sweater, wants to make certain that he is warmed up. I really cannot emphasize enough how cold your hands get at a tournament when the adrenaline starts coursing through your system and your nerves begin getting to you. Your hands just freeze up. Mm. So players, of course, are well known to wear multiple layers, almost always long sleeves. And absolutely. I mean, even at home. Even at home, stay, yeah. yeah I actually warm. refuse to play without socks and shoes on because... Really? Yeah, because I'm one of those people whose entire body temperature is controlled by the temperature of my feet. Feet. So I need those to be nice and toasty warm. Yeah, nice. I have like, the exact opposite problem where I have this giant vent that just shoots hot air at my feet. And oh, it gets kind of uncomfortable, actually. I can imagine, indeed. So we are going yes. to give the final invite. We see the TT1 is in the game for Delta Quadrant, extending... The invite to Jinro once again. Let's see if he will be joining. Oh, and there he is. Yes. Oh, this is exciting. He's in the game. So TT1 will be red. Jinro will be blue. Once again, TT1 has played in multiple MLG events. But Jinro is a first-timer really at every single MLG. Someone who has made a first appearance has won. Huck won the first MLG. Right. Idra's first MLG in DC. He won. And here's Jinro. Has the chance to win. But TT1 is the veteran here of this American tournament at Major League Gaming. And here we are going into the grand finals between Liquid Jinro and TT1 Extended Series. Jinro beginning at a 2-1 advantage against TT1. First map, Delta Quadrant, DJ Wheat. Let's do them one at a time. If you are a fan of Team Liquid and Liquid Jinro currently sitting in the upper bracket undefeated here for the Grand Finals, although that may not matter because we're in an extended series, let me hear some noise for Jinro. And of course, if you would like TT1, who had spent a brief amount of time in the loser's bracket before returning to full force here in the Grand Finals, give a cheer for Fnatic MSI's TT1. And here we go, We in the top right corner, TT1 spawning as the red Protoss. In the top left, we have Liquid Jinro as the blue Terran. And immediately, we know that Jinro is not going to like the fact that his backdoor natural mm. is inching closer to TT1's main. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of cool things. We've seen the pylon come out here to be able to uh, warp into the back. Uh, Protoss has a lot of cool tricks uh, that they can do on this uh, particular map. So, you know, TT1, though, he's not necessarily a trick Protoss player. He's uh -huh. not necessarily a Kiwi Kaki who's going to go on with some aggression or, or uh, to have a few little, uh, you know, magic tricks to pull out of his hat. Instead, it may just be a straightforward game like he had done before, possibly trying to contain his opponent as he's done with other Terrans like Pain User, and then just move in for the kill. Of course, Jinro uh, having a very unique style of his own. You had mentioned that he's shown a lot of variety here in this competition. Could be exactly the case here for the finals. Looks like Jinro is throwing down his barracks and taking a refinery immediately afterwards and sending out an SCV scout. Will he be going to the center first? Yes, indeed. He's going to be stopping by that Zell Naga Watchtower. Wants to get the maximum vision range around the area and then he'll be darting directly to TT1's main and because he comes from the center really absolutely no idea where Jinro is if you are in TT1's shoes. We've got the gateway going down uh, initially here for TT1. His uh, gas is just while warping in and he will see this SCV making his way into the basin. Jinro actually turned around there momentarily then decided to move forward here as he gets his first look at TT1's base. Now this is a very unusual map, Delta Quadrant, because of two things. Every expansion, 
Well, there's actually a million and one expansions yeah. on this map. And oh, accidentally missing the probe will retreat back to pick that off. Did he see the other barracks? No, indeed he did not. But there are a ton of expansions on the map. You have a front door, you have a back door, but the back door has the rocks there. It's a little bit harder to take. Your front door, even though you can straight up plant a command center, is right next to your Protoss opponent, and there are these golds here. So the first one, lots of expansions, all of which are pretty tough to take. And the second big one, look at all this space along the top ledge. Tons of drops are very, very easy to execute. You know, one thing I would point out about those rocks that you said at the expansion that the safe inside uh, inside your own base is that we've seen Jinro be very active with his early units. We saw him taking oh, yeah. out those gold rocks really early. I wouldn't be surprised to see him do something similar and just always be prepared for whatever is coming next. And we see that TT1 is taking a page out of his own book. Looking at his success in the previous series against Pain User, opting to open for a double gateway quite quickly instead of getting that fast gas as we've seen him do before. And now we've got a Reaper coming out here by Jinro. He's going to go to the Zelnaga Tower first, and then he's going to make his way around, and he might even just be able to sneak his way into his opponent's base through the natural. And so that is one advantage that Terran does have here. Probe tries to come, and he is quickly taken out, and this Reaper is going to just go ahead and uh, mosey on into the back here as we have a couple Marine Marauder moving out, but already some nice units here for TT1. TT1 coming out with quite a force. Woo, has to be careful not to let that Stalker get isolated, but it looks like the Reaper in the back did manage to pick off one probe. And uh-oh, it looks like this is not going to go very well for Jinro. He is going to have to pull up on the retreat. He's going to try to take a shot off on that Zealot, but the Stalkers are so fast, are just tracking him down. And here are more units from Liquid Jinro there to meet the force. And there the Zealot's beginning to take oh. some damage. But still, TT1 is pushing so aggressively, got those Stalkers out so fast, and is following it up with an Expo. And there it goes, the one zealot he's going to leave here for the contain, as he does have a few, Jinro does have a few units right here. Not sure if he just forgot to bring him back, but he is going to go ahead and leave him there. And just as he has done before, he goes ahead and throws up that Nexus. Reaper's going to come back through, but very smart of TT1 to just go ahead and leave that Stalker there on the ramp. And it's one of the things I really like about TT1. In those situations where the Banshees were coming or this was coming, we did have him go ahead and split his army and a nice little force so we didn't have to panic to move them around. We do have Jinro now moving out. Uh-oh, and it looks like this is a very large force. No stim out yet, so he will have to control this very, very well. Position it well early, but oh no, look at this Jinro moving straight in for the kill. Will TT1 be able to warp in enough units in time? Uh-oh, TT1 sees everything. Might just go ahead and cancel that Nexus. What will be his choice? He does cancel the Nexus, and now it looks oh. like TT1 is going to be warping in as much as he can, and Jinro going for the big contain. Look at this. What a turn of events. Jinro playing again his own style unlike anything we have seen and there's the forge going down for tt1 and he's going to begin wailing away at these back door rocks but wow very is, very sudden turn of events jinro is basically doing at the front of tt1's base what pain user was having to do inside his own base whether he watched <laughs> those games or not or maybe was analyzing what was going on he's basically doing exactly what tt1 was trying to accomplish against the other Terran players that he was playing, denying them that expansion. But as you can see, it is a complete role reversal. The Nexus was canceled. The CC is going up now, and he will have his expansion before the Protoss user, which of course on this particular map means that you've got to break down these rocks in the back and put it there. So Jinro's taking this opportunity to take the front of his base. He wants to have that expansion up as fast as possible so we won't have time to knock down these back rocks. And we do see the TT1 has just knocked down his backdoor nexus and it, weirdly enough got a very fast forge. Now, it does look like that cannon is going to be able to defend quite a bit of uh, pushing up the front, but curious if he's going to be getting some sort of plus armor or attack upgrade. We've got the factory about ready to complete and also another gas coming in as well. And again, you can see the rallied units continuing to grow here. We've got, uh, of course, the bunkers full as well. And the rocks are down. We've got a scan in the middle and the Nexus is going up on the inside expansion for TT1. So it does look like the assimilators are finished, clearly gearing up to get a lot of gas. Curious how TT1 is going to try to break out of this one, likely the Colossus. Smart decision as it does have that great range. Yes, there is the robotics facility going down now. Still no upgrades coming out for TT1, just slowly warping in those units. Now, even though this is a great contain by Jinro, did he have enough time to begin getting those future tech structures? We see that he is still just on three barracks and doesn't even have a starport done yet. 
No, the starport is going to be complete. There it is. The first medevac is going to be coming out. And just want to point out this SCV from Jinro. Still continuing to check out the map. He, he likes to take the scenic route. He has been going all over, checking all these little expansions for anything that might be going on. And he will put oh, taking a, something out of uh, TT1's book, putting some things up for vision here, I mm -hmm, suppose, mm -hmm. uh, as he will drop down a supply depot right there. And we've still got this bunker contained at the front. Now, obviously, we get much, much more effective with some tanks. And as you mentioned, looking forward to, uh, to find out what is the next tech structures that we're going to see out of Jinro. We're seeing some Vikings come out, combat shield going as well. But that is about it, staying with this very heavy bio army. Another Reaper out right now for General. Looks like he wants to try to bat, bounce into the back of this expansion. There is one Observer there, sees everything. Drop coming up from General, but wow, TT1 really spotted that very, very quickly. Reaper going to come down. Whoa, looks like TT1 pulled back that Stalker at the last possible second, and no kills. In fact, will get popped in mid-flight like a cicada. And there it looks like General is continuing to toss down some bunkers and will not go for that drop, and will go for that drop. Yes, uh, it does look like he is going to, <clears throat> well, he's going to go way out of vision here. He's going to go over to the side, maybe perhaps a, a decoy that, uh, oh, he's just going to send that back. Not really sure. He's going to, he's got this factory floating out here. He's going to move in. He'll see a lot of what is going on back here. Now, where is the army? There is a nice little grouping here by TT1, but let's see what General could do with this drop. He's landing. He really wants to kill off that support base so we can get the range prevented from uh, getting up. But, of course, there's one Colossus there to greet him. And the range is getting quite close to done. He is even continuing to chrono boost that plus one. And actually, everything related to the Colossus is getting chrono boosted. <laughs> Yep, uh, and I think that he's probably going to want to break out of here. You'd mentioned that whole feeling of being contained in your base, not really able to move. Although I would be uh, willing to guess that TT1 not totally phased by that, especially on a map like this where you can still get a safe expansion. Here we got another drop in the base, just kind of pecking away at the shields there of the robotics bay. And then here comes the Vikings to do a little bit of damage. And only uh, just some shield hits there on the Colossi. That is about it. But you can see Jinro's Viking number starting to increase. Very nice little tactic there by General. Also going to swing around this back. Notice how much space there is up on top. So huge, so easy to pull these drops off. But it looks like three Colossi out right now. Four TT1. Uh-oh, is getting a little over eager with those Zealots. Does need to use these Colossi to pick these off from the high ground. But here comes General with a drop in the back. Yep, drop going in near the, nat or near the inside expansion. He is going to go ahead and plug away at that cannon that's firing away. It actually takes out the medevac. He'll stem oh. up, take out that cannon. Uh, meanwhile, at the front, no action as the entire army for TT1 tries to move into this position. These units will have nowhere to go and will be taken out. And there they are trying to stem and kill any last probe that they can do any permanent damage. We do have the Twilight Council down. Could be for plus two attack. Could be for the Zealot with leg speed. Likely going to be a blink upgrade as that is a very popular way to pick off those Vikings, but it looks like the scan from Jinro, and he's increasingly getting concerned and building bunkers back and back. Yeah, now having that inside expansion, it's fine and dandy, and it's really good for TT1 right now, but you can see that Jinro is already breaking down these rocks, expanding to the gold, and that's where it's going to get a little nasty, is that you imagine that a Protoss would have to take a far expansion, but hold on, it looks like he's going to go ahead and try to make his way out of the base. Oh my goodness, the, oh, the Colossi are taking huge amounts of damage, but they are trying their best to clear out these bunkers. TT1 is now down to just two more Colossi, and Jinro with some excellent defense, one more Colossi, I left. Look at the huge number of Vikings, but is the stalker count from TT1 too great? Jinro lands the Vikings. Only three more Marauders, and look at how many stalkers TT1 has. Yeah, amazing. He's cleaning this up quite nicely. He did lose quite a few Colossus in that battle, but he is going to be able to get out of his base and force Jinro to oh, come up wow. with another way to contain. Expanding on the skulls and bones of Jinro's units. <laughs> And now heading out with a small force. Will he have time to regroup? It looks like he's not doing so yet. Does have one more Colossus out and is beginning to make Immortals. 
Uh, here we see the army now replenishing of Jinro. He's putting down a couple of bunkers. He's still got several Vikings left. Um, he does have supply depots spotting around the map, but nothing is going to help him out here as he just has to be very meticulous. And very, Oh, a couple zealots going up front, and uh, he is going to manage to take them out. He's going to chase forward. Stim forward takes out three zealots there as uh, some of those zealots got a little over eager. A couple of medevacs out now as well. These bunkers are not populated, but he'll put some units in there. And remember, he's still got this gold going, about to drop gas there as well. Additionally, we've got... Tanks coming out now.